two, team keep it clean. Welcome back to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask any NFL question you want, and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be a part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids, show a little extra support for the channel, but if you don't want to, that is completely fine. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. Um, there was a, a the other day where I was um I, I was feeling a, l- a little bit down, just a little bit, not nothing crazy, anything like that, but I was feeling a little bit down, and um I had uploaded a video, and the first couple of comments was just like just crazy support, man, just crazy support, uh, just showing crazy love, and that just uh, really like gave me a nice little boost, man. So I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean, and just know that um your words. Your words have a very powerful impact on people, uh, and that's whether you choose to use them for positive vibes or negativity, whatever you choose to do. And I ain't talking about me, I'm just talking about in life in general. Whatever you choose to do, try to use your words for more positivity, especially when you're communicating with people. Even if y'all disagree on something, even if, if y'all don't see stuff the same way, it's still okay to be respectful. <laughs> so it goes a long way. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Ooh, we got a lot of questions. Let's do it. First question came from Heather. Appreciate you being a patron. She said, hey, Engraven, thanks for the positivity you bring each day. Hope you and your family are doing well. We're doing pretty good. I appreciate that, Heather. Uh, she says, so quick question. When is g going to open up the vault? I mean, I'm curious to see these top secret schemes he has, and I believe it's time to open the treasure chest. Thanks. I think we would all agree with you. For sure. Uh, we've been waiting. Um, G- and g he, he he opened it up a little bit against the Steelers, a little bit. Um, but let's see what he's got in store against the Browns and against the Pack. Like, hey, if you ain't opened it up already, which he did a tiny bit, you definitely going to have to crank that thing open ASAP with the games that we got coming up in the position that the Ravens find themselves in. So it, it's time, g Next question came from Clarence. He said, is Lamar leaving the Ravens after his rookie contract? I'm a diehard Ravens fan, and I love Lamar, but the Ravens are not moving in Lamar's best interest. Lamar will not sign the extension until the Ravens fire Mr. Greg Roman and fix the O-line, or Lamar is leaving the Ravens without signing the extension, and he will be a free agent. Lamar holds all the cards. Do you think I am right? Well, Lamar Jackson certainly has all the leverage in the world when it comes to his contract, his contract talks, contract this, because he he could be like, hey, yeah, you, you see that. I've been I've been playing bad recently. Even though uh, look look at what's around me and look at like look at this look at this. And I love man. I forgot who it was. Somebody in the comment section made such a. It was two people. One of them was oh my god Don Banks. And every time he puts a comment, I be thinking he yelling because he puts it in all caps like that. But he put now LJ's a scapegoat. He's hold, for holding on to the ball too long. Well, he is holding on to the ball too long because the scheme is the long ball, and he's not seeing the checkdowns because his progressions are designed for the long routes. While the pocket collapses around him, so he takes a sack or tries to force the long ball because the plays are designed that way. And I was like, wow, that's that is a really good point, and, and that's something that we've talked about a lot too. Uh, with Greg Roman, he he got to help out Lamar, <laughs> like with the with the calling of the plays. It can't just be full verts all the time. You you got to have some underneath stuff, and there has, but at the same time, there have been some checkdowns and stuff that Lamar has missed along the way, and some underneath stuff too. But yeah, like I said, my whole theory about the whole thing about Lamar just being broken right now, I think just all the running around this whole season that he's been having to do, I think it's just caught up with him mentally. So it's, it's, it's sped up his clock in his mind, and it's just things are just off right now. And I, I do fully believe that he can get it fixed because we've seen Lamar do the, the great, amazing stuff before. But another thing that somebody else, another point that they made, I should have took a screenshot of this one too, but they said that with Lamar, right now this, this slump that he's on right now, they said it's just it's different because with Lamar, and it's almost like he's been a victim of his own success because we're so used to the extraordinary Lamar. We're so used to, oh, my goodness, Lamar, how did he do that? That when he's been playing like he's been performing recently, it's like, oh, what is this? But it's like, again, he's been the victim of his own success because he's on like we put him on another pedestal than we do for a lot of other quarterbacks. Uh, but that that just happens when you accomplish so much in so little in such a short amount of time. Uh, but anyway. Back to uh, the question. Um, mm, I don't I don't see 
him leaving after his rookie contract. Of course, anything is possible until it's not possible anymore. But Ray, ooh, I I would not want to imagine that scenario because oh, Ravens fans would lose it. They would lose it. We would lose it. I can't even just say that. I gotta say we, cause I would lose it too. Um, but Lamar, he certainly does have the power. Uh, because yeah, he could tell them like, look, you 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 know what I can do. You you know what I'm capable of. You already and even though I've been playing bad for this, look at my resume. This is not a normal thing for me. I don't normally play like this, especially for this stretch. So. This offensive line, y'all better get it right. Receivers, I mean, y'all y'all did better, but offensive court, every he could command them like that. He has that power because without Lamar, ooh, hoo, hoo, it wouldn't be looking so pretty. It really wouldn't. So I, I don't think it gets to this to where he leaves after his rookie. I don't think he's leaving at all. I don't see that. Again, like I say, anything's possible till it's not possible anymore. But Ravens, they yeah, they they do need to to fix this. And again, they can't control everybody getting hurt. They can't control and like literally everybody got hurt this year. Everybody. Um, but just moving forward, especially the offensive line. Because that's been the biggest weakness of this team. It has to be fixed like ASAP. And I know you can only do so much during this year. So I don't expect anything this year. But this offseason, to really retool that thing and really just build a wall, build a unit that where ain't nobody even thinking about touching Lamar. Oh, wow. Y'all, like, Team Keep It Clean be so in sync sometimes. Next question that came from my guy, BB. You said, what if Lamar decides to move on from the Ravens after this season? Thanks for the channel, fam, and hashtag Team Keep It Clean and hashtag positive. Um, yeah, we, like, we, we already talked about that. Now, if he decided that he wanted to move on, though, that would be a whole other story. Um, because he is on, next year is the fifth year option. And if he, did, oh, boy, that would just break hearts like crazy and again we don't even want to think about that scenario like i said anything's possible until it's not possible anymore but ravens they uh again like the previous guy said clarence Ra ravens got to do right by him and they really like because it's been tough because before the whole the, the the argument was oh man ravens ain't really give lamar receivers like that then it's like all right so they gave him receivers but then oh pfft, Offensive line, it, it just been, it's just been garbage. And, you know, depending on where you at with Lamar, some people will view that as excuses for Lamar. Oh, man, oh, first y'all talked about receivers. Now y'all talked about offensive line. But with the offensive line and the receivers, too, it, it was true. It was, it's very true. You can't operate with no offensive line. That, like a bad offensive line, it shuts down everything immediately. Um, but now you got receivers. The receivers are legitimate and whatnot, but the offensive line just been all kinds of bad. Um, so we would hope that Lamar doesn't get to that. I, again, I don't think he will at all. Um, but you, you never know. Do you think it's a long-standing problem that the Ravens are all heart and no brains? Next question came from my guy, Joshua. He said, Raven, I appreciate you keeping it clean for the Flock Nation. The team being 8-4 and four is still impressive with all the adversity, but I'm sensing that the organization as a whole values willpower over actual intelligence intact. It seems from the coach to our GM to our coordinators to even the conditioning coaches, the Ravens just aren't a smart organization. We don't make smart trades and signings. The coordinators don't adjust during the games. Our cap situation is always sketchy and we are always injured. Not to be overly negative, but it seems like the organization as a whole lacks IQ in important areas, holding them back from being the great team we know they can be. Wow. This, wow. 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 Ooh. Do they value willpower over actual intelligence intact? Well, you know, this Ravens team, they, they love them some analytics. They love them some analytics. But um, from the coach to our GM, well, uh, start, start at the GM. Start at the top. Um, no, with Eric DaCosta, I, uh, man, it's tricky. And not, like none of these guys are dumb. I don't think they're not dumb. Um, they were all very smart individuals, uh, but to me, sometimes they misplace their value, in my opinion. Um, and when with EDC, he 
makes some good signings overall. Um, he's more aggressive than Ozzy. Um, he has missed on a lot of signings too. They haven't came through. They've, they've fallen through. Um, but I just feel like there's been this extra value put on draft picks. I know they, they love draft picks. And draft picks, uh, you got to have draft picks. You got to build draft picks. You got to develop draft picks. But I feel like there's sometimes there's just too much emphasis placed on draft picks in my opinion um and i just i feel like they could come up off of them a little bit more um in order to make that move for that guy who is proven and i felt the same way with ozzy newsom sometimes too uh like we go back to the whole jalen ramsey thing they they could have had jalen ramsey but they didn't want to come up off them draft picks like uh, they didn't want to they were willing to trade i think the first and the fourth round draft pick but I think that it was a cow. I forgot who it was, but they wanted the first and a third round draft pick. And they were like, nope, don't want it. Or we're not going to do it. And it, it, it's been times, other times too, we heard, oh, Ravens, they, they didn't want to give up all the draft picks. It was like, oh, okay. Um, but EDC, no, he's, he does not, he's still a good GM. He's a good GM. That's just one thing that I just I, I disagree with sometimes with, with the, uh, how, how much they really covet those draft picks. Um, John Harbaugh. Oh, John Harbaugh, uh, willpower over actual intelligence and tact. Um, Harbaugh can he, he can have an ego sometimes. We know that, uh, and I think um, with Harbaugh, I, I think as far and when you talk about holding a team back from really being great, I feel like sometimes the family ties they get in the way. That's how I feel with uh, with Harbaugh, because he'll with with the hirings, the hirings that he'll do, he'll bring in guys that are good enough, good enough to 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 do a job, but not great enough to get it done, in my opinion, because he, and he'll bring bring on all these guys that he worked with in the past, that he bit, that he was with with the Eagles, you know, like you you look up anybody that John Harbaugh hired. Uh, they all done been with the Eagles. They all done work with him before in some way, form, fashion. Or they work with his brother. It's, it's either one or the other. They either work with John Harbaugh before or they work with his brother, Jim Harbaugh. It's always one of the two. Always. And I, I feel like with that, he, he hires guys that are comfortable. That are, well, yeah, I, I know you. But, but guys that are not going to get him out of his comfort zone. So I feel like the Ravens almost settle. I feel like they almost settle, and, and like a lot of times, it just feels like their their potential isn't all the way tapped. Um, and then with uh, with Greg Roman, with Greg Roman, um, we know his history, of course, 49ers, Bills, all that good stuff, blah blah blah. Uh, and I, I feel like with Greg Roman um, and and Wink, a lot of times throughout this year, the, the situational football has been a big question mark for them. Uh, Wink over the past couple of weeks has been a lot better. Greg Roman, um, it's been uh, it's it's been up and down. It's just been very inconsistent. And we know we don't expect the coach or coordinator. We don't expect them to call a perfect game every game. No, that's that's crazy talk for for us to expect that. But adjustments when it comes to adjustments, it's just it's been a lack. I feel like it's been a lack. Um, now he talked about uh, our cap situation is always sketchy. And we are always injured with the cap situation. Um, they they spend they they spend money. A lot of times they uh, where most of their money goes usually is into uh, keeping their own. It's into to retaining their own. Um, they recently given out contracts to Marlon Humphrey, uh, to Tavon Young, to uh, to Ronnie Stanley. Um, so they they've done a lot of keeping their own, and you know Lamar's contract is coming despite those couple of first couple of questions that we got on this episode um so it's it's, it's on the way uh but again that yeah they, they they keep their own oh they just gave gus edwards a contract it wasn't a big contract but they gave gus edwards a contract um so as far as their spending yeah they they they, they spend to the cap pretty much every year um now when you say the the cap situation is sketchy um i don't i don't really understand what you mean by that if you mean like, oh, well, Ravens don't really have that much money. Um, 
And they like for certain players and whatnot. Cause, you know, obviously certain players they cost more than other players because their the salary cap will be higher. Uh, Ray, they, Ravens could they could find their way around stuff. Like you can maneuver the cap. You know you can. Like I mean, we see it all the time. Um, but that's not something that they really like to do like that. Uh, they I think back in after after the Super Bowl year when they tried that. And it just came crashing down. They were like, you no, know, nah, we're not doing that again. And especially because over the past couple of years, they just got out of a lot of uh, cap drama. With but it, it, I mean, it's t- with the whole Ray Rice thing. That was uh, yeah. And then with Joe Flacco when they traded him to the Broncos. Ooh, that seemed like it was so long ago. But when they traded him to the Broncos, um, they still had to eat some of his cap for his deal. Uh, but they got out of that the following year after that, I believe. But anyway, they um with the cap, they 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 spin to it. Uh, but yeah, my 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 thing is the uh, again my 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 probably my gripes or whatever um, things that I would disagree with. Like I said, the how much they really covet those draft picks and the the family ties when it comes to hirings. Um, but as far as uh, <laughs> Saying they just aren't a smart organization. I don't know about that. I just feel like, I do feel like some better, more aggressive, uh, more team-friendly moves could be made. Ooh, how do you follow up that question? Anyway, next question came from my boy Mac. He said, hey, Graven, I just got finished watching this stressful Steelers game, and my anxiety is through the roof, LOL. I just got two quick questions. I want your thoughts on my first question is, why don't you think John Harbaugh, did, why did, didn't he trust Wink enough to strategize a plan for overtime to get a stop and possibly win in overtime? Well, apparently, um, well, obviously, Marlon Humphrey, he would, he would have been out. Tay-Tay was apparently just sick as a dog. Um, and so you would have Jimmy Smith, Anthony Averett, um, Robert Jackson, uh, they probably, I probably would have put Brandon Stevens at corner, um, and dropped Geno Stone and Chuck Clark at safety. So I think you would have had, you would have still had guys, uh, but I guess he wanted to go with right then and there, uh, the offense, since they hadn't been clicking much of the game, even though they clicked on that last drive and they moved the ball downfield, even though Lamar, he did throw that pick, but thank goodness for that false start. <laughs> so, ooh. Oh, that would have been an even uglier way to end the game. Oh, that would have been a much uglier way to end the game. Um, but thank goodness, whoever jumped, jumped. I don't even remember who got the false start. But So that negated that pick. Oof, thank you. Um, but I just, I think he's just going with momentum. And then since the Bengals lost too, he's like, oh, okay, Bengals lost. All right, we straight, even if we lose, oh, we still good. So that's that. Uh, anyway. He said his second question is, what do you think the biggest concern is going forward as we go through the remaining tough stretch? Thanks for reading this. And just like the Ravens, uh, for the, the Ravens fall for the first three quarters of every game. Out. <laughs> um, biggest concern going forward, offense. Just offense. Offense, scoring offense. Of the offense's consistency, uh, just the offense as a whole. Next question came from T-Dog. He said, Engraven, let's be honest. Our season is done. Well, your question's already null and void. It's, that's false. It's not done. They got five games left. And even though the team is looking like it's, it's just a struggle, the eight and four, they're in a good position. Season's not done. But let me finish your question. He said, Lamar's playing horrible. O-line came blocked to save their lives. Wink won't stop blitzing. And their injuries on top of injuries and on top of injuries. If we make the playoffs, we're one and done. Call this an overreaction if you want, but this is ugly. My question is, if we do bounce back, how will we? By fixing everything that you just named. Simple as that. Fixing everything that you just listed and everything that you just named. You listed all the problems, so you also listed all the answers. Next question came from my boy Davin. He said, do you think our coaches have lost hope for us to make it to the playoffs so they decided to keep Bateman as an unseen player for the most part until next year when everybody is back? No. I I, I, I would at least hope not. But no, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I just think... Um, they are with Sammy Watkins being back. That's been a big factor, and one that I forget about a lot of times when it comes to Rashad Bateman and his playing time. Um, but I think they may now be realizing, like, hey, he is a rookie, so we can ease him in a bit more. Like when he first came back, again, I was so shocked at how many snaps he was playing. He was playing a lot from jump. Um, but I, I did forget about Sammy Watkins being out. Uh, so when Sammy Watkins came back, that's the veteran. And this is the veteran part of the season. Not saying Rashad can't step in and show out. And I, I think he should get some more opportunity because that, that dude is something nice, man. 
Um, but I think they just relying on the veterans right now, especially in crunch time and whatnot. Um, so I, I think that's all it, that it is. I don't, I don't think they're hiding him for next season because if they would do it, that, that would not be smart. If you were hiding him for next season, that wouldn't be good. So I don't think they're doing it. This question came from my guy Aiden. He said, hey, Graven, hope your day is going well. I just want to share my opinion on a two-point conversion call. I know you were against it, but I think it was the right call. I was at the game. Oh, that's why you were for it, because you, you really wanted to shut up them Steelers fans. That's why you were for it, because you were there live. But, nah, I hope you had fun, man. I live in Pittsburgh as a Ravens fan and know the culture and Steelers fans. Hinesfield has a different type of environment. I can't explain unless you've experienced it yourself. No, nope, never have. Uh, if the Steelers have momentum in that stadium, they can beat any team. The Ravens scored on the last drive and took all the momentum away f uh, from the Steelers, and they tried to end the game so they couldn't get the momentum back. If that game goes into overtime, the Steelers are a T.J. Watt sack or Deontay Johnson 30-yard catch away from winning the game. I could easily say the same thing about the Ravens. The Ravens are an interception, or they are sack or forced fumble, or they are Lamar Jackson, a Hollywood touchdown, a semi. They are all that away from winning the game. You could easily talk about both sides of it. Like, yeah, anyway, he said it only takes one play to get that crowd going, and it would only take one play to shut them up, too. <laughs> he said, I hate to say it, but I wouldn't trust the team going into overtime and battling through the adversity. Have you not been watching the Ravens this year? Did you, did you all of a sudden forget about the Minnesota Vikings game? Did you all of a sudden forget about the Indianapolis Colts game? Did you all of a sudden forget about the Raiders? Well, I know you want to forget about the Raiders game because they lost. But still, this team has been in overtime. and They've been in this down-to-the-wire stuff, too. Not just over. They have faced so much adversity already. So they know what it's like to deal with it. And in fact, I think this team actually thrives off of it. And I ain't saying that as no home or nothing. The reason I say that is because... When there's no adversity in the first three quarters, three and a half quarters of the game, they're just walking around, oh, we're chilling, oh, ain't nothing going on. Then as soon as that adversity hits late in the fourth quarter, that's when they start waking up. So I, I, that's why I think they really thrive and they enjoy all the drama and the adversity. So I think they would have been just fine in overtime. He said they've battled through a lot this year, and with the injuries, I think our fuel is running out. Uh, well, agree to disagree. <laughs> Timing is everything. Next question came from my guy Bullet Atrex. Lamar, sense of urgency. And Graven, we all know Lamar isn't playing like Lamar Jackson. There could be many factors to why, but like you said, the sense of urgency just isn't there for this offense. I think something has changed, uh, and that's that Lamar got more patient. When the pressure comes, he steps out. Oh, he steps inside of the pocket and tries to find a receiver downfield, and a lot of times takes a sack. He used to do a lot more. As soon as he saw pressure, he just took it and ran where a lot of his success came from. Does Lamar lack that sense of urgency where he realizes pressure is there? Time to take off. And could that be the answer to this slow and struggling? <coughs> Oof, that was an HD sneeze. To this slow and struggling offense, and I ain't even gonna edit that out. This is exactly what Kyla did on his rushing touchdown. He saw the pressure and didn't think twice and just took off. Um, see, I, I think that is a part of it. Lamar may be overthinking some stuff and not just playing football. Um, and also the, the hero ball, the big play stuff. Uh, so I, I think that's definitely a part of it. He said also during a two-point conversion attempt, as soon as TJ jumped, instead of stepping off, I think he would have found success if he took off to the right. Thanks for all the hard work you put in and keep doing your thing. Hey, appreciate it, man. Appreciate all the good questions over the years, too. Now, Lamar, on, a, on a, the two-point conversion, he did a good job. He did a great job on that play because <laughs> T.J. Watt was literally in his face. So he snapped the ball. T.J. Watt is like T.J. Watt got snapped instead of the ball because he was right there. Um, so Lamar, he stepped in and did the throw, did the little side-on throw. Mark Andrews, he slowed up a little bit, but throw could have been better, but <laughs> so could the protection have been. Uh, but again, it was, it was a great play call. It was an amazing play call by the Ravens. Um, but yeah, they just they they couldn't execute. Um, so, well, yeah, I I do think it's a mix of all of those things. Um, Cause he yeah the, the he just I think second guessing, um, and just not playing instinctive football. That's how I would put it. Next question came from my boy Antoine. He said, hey, Graven, my question is, if the Ravens were to get rid of Greg Roman, who else would be a good fit for Lamar in the Ravens offense? Well, that's a really good question. I would say uh, Keith, Keith Williams or T. Martin. And the reason I would say one of those two is because I feel like they would be able to connect to the players uh, just on a whole nother level. Um, they would also be able to understand what G. Rowe did well. 
uh, they would under- be able to understand, all right, this is what worked for him in the running game. Well, in the years prior before we got here because everybody wasn't hurt. But this is what worked well with Giro. And, hey, maybe this is, didn't, this is what didn't work so well. So let's take that and let's incorporate our own stuff and, and sprinkle in some new stuff because we've never been offensive coordinators in the NFL before. So they would bring a fresh start also while bringing along some old stuff that was successful. So I would say those one of those two. Next question came from Long Lee. He said, hey, good morning and good evening, Graven. With Bateman signing with a new agent and speculations of him preparing to ask for a trade, but hopefully not, what do you think the Ravens can do to satisfy Bateman? Now, I, um, it, was, it was a little worrisome for me. I remember when we first saw that, I was like, hold up, the, the timing is just so weird. Um, but I've seen some people say that the, the, this representation that he's under now, they also, uh, are, are, they also signed a, uh, are, are signed with, are they agents of a couple of other Ravens players as well? Um, so hopefully it was just something where he saw a better opportunity, maybe for endorsements, maybe for, uh, some promotional stuff, maybe to just get him some extra bread, uh, on the side besides football. Uh, I don't know. So hopefully it ain't nothing crazy. But what can they do to satisfy Bateman? Uh, just keep him in the mix. Now, next year, if it's based off of everything, that, the way that this whole season has been, then I wouldn't expect Sammy Watkins to be back right now. We still got five games left, but based off of the first 12, uh, I wouldn't expect Sammy Watkins to be back. Um, not to say that he's been bad, because he hasn't been bad, but he hasn't been, like, great. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't expect him to return. So Rashad Bateman's role would go way up um so that's 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 a given um and this next part he said on the flip side do you think we can do anything to keep him here in baltimore if he does ask for a trade um yeah they would they would just say no like and again i I don't think it'll get to that and like i said in the video when we talked about him hiring a new agent hopefully it's just nothing hopefully just ends up being just a bunch of nothing um but all they would have to do was say no he would be very unhappy, but and then you know they would end up trading him anyway, because um, you wouldn't just want a player just sitting there not doing anything, and you just he just sitting there. So he said, "I've already seen people commenting on his Instagram post begging for him to stay. This whole ordeal frightens me. Since Rashad was my favorite wide receiver coming out of the college's past draft, I hope he only had an issue with his ex agent and not an issue with the team. As always, thank you for all your input and consistent videos." Hashtag team keep it clean. Appreciate it. Yes, I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I, I wouldn't. Unless we hear a story this summer. But, yeah, other than that, I wouldn't worry about it. Next question came from Jamie. He said, I'm the Louisiana Raven. I hope you and the family are doing well. Being that the Ravens are who we thought they were. <laughs> I have faith in them to keep finding ways to win. That said, my question is, do you believe we will make a deep playoff run and possibly a Super Bowl appearance? It would maybe quiet some of the fire EDC and fire Giro and fire winking, fire Coach Haas people. You play to win the game. Hello, in my Herm Edwards voice. We all could use a laugh. Oh yeah, you ain't lying about that. We could all always use a laugh. Um, I uh, I think first and foremost they they gotta get in. And like I guess I always say, if you get in, anything is possible. Anything. This team, as frustrating as they have been. Uh, as stressful as they have been, as dramatic as they have been, they have shown like they can compete with just about anybody. Well, except the Bengals, and that that game was just not competitive. Uh, well, in the second half. But besides that, um, they've shown that they 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 can fight. They can fight and as slow as their offenses be. It's, it, that's what's so frustrating because it's like, man, we just imagine, like, man, imagine if this offense actually scored some points in the first half of the game. Imagine if this offense actually, was, even if it was field goals, even though touchdowns would be much better, but just even if it was field goal, like, imagine this offense being consistent. You ain't got to score every single drive. I mean, we would love that, but you ain't got to score every single drive. Just, like, once every two drives, once every, like, something, please. And... But they, they don't do that. So I just feel like if, if they could get things clicking, and yeah, we know everybody and their moms is hurt. But if they could get things clicking, they got a shot. They really do. They got a shot. If you can get Lamar, like, feeling himself, if we can get Shays Lamar, if we can get ben, ben, eating a banana on the sideline of Lamar, if we can get laughing on the sideline, because he don't laugh no more. He don't be laughing no more. If we can get that happy Lamar, oh, boy. It, it would be scary for the rest of the NFL. I done made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that?